Hello and welcome to this tutorial about baking out your characters and viewing them in an FBX viewer outside of Maya. So I'll be using some of the tools that I've rolled out, but uh, these should be universal and you could use these steps with pretty much any tool that you're using. So to read in a uh, previously saved file that I've got, which is pretty much the setup for this tutorial, I have uh, a character here, this uh, vampire character, and the construction of the rig you can see has been separated out. Again, the way that I like to do things is very clean. I don't like the rig itself to go into the engine because there's always the possibility that you're using in your rig something that is Maya-centric that um, the various engines may or may not understand. It's kind of a kind of a crapshoot, and you don't want to leave things up to chance. So the way that I that I get uh, rid of that possibility is that I always have the geometry as one object. I have the rig as its own grouped separate object, and this can be as strange as you want it to be, it really doesn't matter. But the third and final part is that the skeleton itself is the only thing driving the mesh. So if I open up the skeleton here on the left, you can see as I scroll down to the outliner, this skeleton is made up of nothing but joints, which is going to be really good for our baking process. If I uh, bake with parts of the rig halfway between joints, as some very complex rigs are, then it looks good, but it gets very messy. The only things I want to export from this setup are the skeleton and the mesh that that skeleton controls. Now the rig controls the skeleton, so things get a little more complex here. But what we want to do is we want to cut the strings on this puppet and let it move on its own. And the strings are the setup for this rig. And it really doesn't matter what it's like as long as the animators are comfortable with using it and it is grouped in its own area. There's really no particular way you can you can make the rig. Um, but I do like to separate it out from the joint structure, which is just a selection of bones, and the geometry. All this stuff is separate for a very specific reason. And that reason is that we're going to be exporting just, as I said, the mesh and the skeleton. So, to cut the strings from this marionette, um, you want to make sure that you're in Maya under the animation mode, because we're going to be going up to edit, going down to keys, and going down finally to bake simulation, go into the options. This will bring up the options screen here, allowing you to make absolutely sure that you've got the top of the skeleton selected before you do any of this. And let me return this to the reset. So this is the default setup that you might have in the bake animation options. It is very important that you turn on below because it says in the hierarchy, basically it's only going to bake this top bone here and absolutely nothing underneath it unless you turn on below. Now it's going to get the whole of the hierarchy. The other thing, I don't really have any shapes in here. Shapes are blend shapes for the face, whatnot. I don't need that, so I'm going to leave it off. And that's pretty much all I need to change in this case. Um, my time slider is only one of many moves. So, and I'll just bring up the move lister here to prove that. There's a little tool I wrote that lets you have several moves in one animation file. So, uh, as you click under these buttons on the far right, it basically sorts out the time range to that particular move. So I can verify the walk. I can verify his idle. Let me just bring this in here. Verify the idle. Verify one, attack number one. And all that kind of loops well. Attack number two and takes damage the last animation here. So these all loop, but they are effectively all one big long move, and that's for the ease of use into the game engine where I've simply set the time ranges in this uh, by a degree of hundreds because the end frames will be beneath that hundred, and if I need to add five more frames or ten more frames to a walk or an idle or an attack. It's really not going to crush up against the next move because I've given it a buffer. So I always start these on increments of 100, and then I try to stay to about 30 frames per move. And that's just to kind of, uh, you know, one move equals one second, 30 frames a second in video. So the point of, uh, of bringing this up is that I've got 430 frames encompassing the whole of this character's moves. Currently, the timeline is only set to one of those moves. So if I want to export everything, or rather bake everything, I need to make sure that that is the range I give it here in the start and end. If it's on time slider, it's only going to bake for that move, okay, if you have it set to something smaller. 
So under start and end, I'm going to actually type in start time 0, and the end time is going to be the furthest move, which is 430 frames out. So to cover it, I'm going to go 450. Okay. So now I'm going to bake this character, and you can see that it's basically going to run through all the animations, and it's going to uh, put the put a rotation value on each of those uh, bones. So here we are with baking. You can see him going through all his different moves once, it doesn't loop. And now we've got these red tick marks here at the bottom saying that it's baked pretty much one rotation value for every single bone. We can validate this by bringing up the graph editor. Here's the character, press F to get a longer shot, and then press Shift and click on the plus sign of the graph editor to go beneath to look at all the frames. Here we are, F. Uh, looks a little strange, some of this, these bits have gone pretty much off the map here. The way I like to clean this up is go into Select, turn off Key so that you're selecting only curves, select all of the curves, and use something called an Euler filter. And the Euler filter, some people call it Euler because it looks like that, but it's apparently called Euler filter. And you can utilize that to see if it optimizes the uh, curves. It does in this case. One of them is a little crazy, but it's, uh, it's better than it was. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up here to Edit, Delete All by Type uh, Constraints. And you think, wait a minute, you're going to, you're going to uh, nuke the rig. Well, no, the bones are manipulating the mesh, but it's not using a constraint system. That mesh is skinned to the bones. What I'm doing is I'm cutting off all the constraints. Again, Delete All by Type, not by Type. Delete All by Type Constraints. It's getting rid of any of the influence uh, of the rig. So now I can come in here and I can grab these two joint rig sets and just press delete. Also this walk guide here I put at the bottom which is just a little uh, line pattern to make sure that when this character walks the feet stick to the ground. It's a little test that I did. See that? You can use that for your own edification. But I want to delete that as well. So delete it there. And so now I've got this character that moves on their own like so. Because the only thing that's happening here is that I've baked all the bones. They all have separate rotation, and the mesh is beholden to nothing more than the influence of those bones. We no longer need the rig. We took what we needed from it. The other thing you want to do for clarity's sake is to come up here and delete all by type, something called uh, non-deformer history. The bones are deforming the mesh, so we don't want to delete that um, setup, but everything else we do want to delete. It's just kind of a nice cleanup for Maya. So I deleted the non-deformer history. She has to be super clean. I like to come up here to File, Optimize Scene Size, and it basically gets rid of anything that's errata or extra or unnecessary. If you noticed over here, it got rid of some of the layers because it, uh, I deleted the things that belong in those layers, most likely the rig. So the last thing we want to do is export this character, and I want to make this all the way out to 430 here. So I'm going to double click on the timeline, and it's going to go to its maximum. You double click again goes to the minimum. So I can bring up the move lister again if I want, quickly validate that each of these sets work okay, the walk looks okay, the idle should look okay. Again, just sort of verifying each move before I export anything. The attack's working, okay, pretty good. So I'm going to double click this to bring it out to the full range of all the moves. Select both things and then come up to File and I'm going to export all. And I've got an FBX exporter loaded. If you don't have the FBX exporter loaded, you may want to come in here to Windows, Setting Preferences, Plugin Manager, and just make sure that you actually have the FBX plugin loaded. And this should bring up a floating window for you. And I have it. Um, you want to make sure that you've got your, your exporter installed. Depending upon the version of Maya that you're running, you need to either go online and find out where those are, Mine is here under FBX Maya LL, and I simply clicked on Loaded, and have it auto load as well. And so these are the. This is what I need. But if you're running a different version, since I'm running 2016, uh, you need to find out if there's some sort of new way of installing it. It was loaded with Maya in previous versions. Now I believe you got to go get a download on, online, etc. Um, so I've got the FBX export loaded, which is why it's now selectable here. If you don't have it as a selectable means you don't have it loaded. You need to make sure that that's going on. And so I'm going to edit the preset as well 
to let you see all the things that you need to have enabled if you want this to export correctly. First of all, make sure that you're including smoothing groups, triangulate, animation. You need that on there. I have found that um, baking the animation actually helps. I know we just baked it, but okay, we'll bake it again. Fine, whatever. Baking animation 1 through 430, which is the maximum uh, frame range for the animations that I've got here. Resampling on deformed models. I've got skins. I don't have blend shapes, so I'm not worried about exporting that. And uh, going all the way to the bottom, making sure I am not exporting things like constraint systems. Don't have any. I deleted them all. Cameras, lights, do not embed the media. You need your texture separate so that you know where that is. This sort of makes this um, you know, strange hybrid of having the media right in the FBX, like the texture. It gets a little messy. I like to keep things separate for control. Also, file conversion to feet. The up axis should be Y. And I've got my type binary, and the version is 2014. So I'm going to save that. Uh, I haven't really changed anything, so I don't need to save the preset. I suggest you do if you done this for the first time. And I'm going to just export all at this point. I've already got this saved to the desktop. I will make a new one, Mickey. And in this case, I'll bring in Mickey 2. So it's going to export everything. Now I come up and I uh, evoke Autodesk's FBX review. It's a free, it is a free bit of software that Autodesk gives you that lives outside of Maya that allows you to validate that things are fine. Because if you just look at it in Maya, well, it may look fine, but you have absolutely no idea if it's working for different reasons. Um, like you forgot to delete something in Maya, and it won't actually survive in the engine. So this is a really good litmus test to see if something is, is exists outside of Maya's influence at all. I know it looks like Maya, and you can see all the skeletons here, including the world joint bone that goes from his hip to the bottom like a tail. It keeps him centered at zero, 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 so when he's moving, the engineers can just make that bone travel along the world. But he's going through the full range of motion here. There's not really any looping going on because I want to make sure that everything is in this singular FBX file. That's a little more important. Some of the controls, right click, brings back your controls for seeing things. Under settings, you can turn on all kinds of stuff if you need to. Um, these are different ways of seeing the same character. But I've pretty much validated that this, this character works. And I'm happy to say, the next stop is for me to put this into the game engine and see it working inside um, inside the project itself. So that's the long and short of baking things and why you'd want to bake them and also how it assures you a degree of certainty in Maya that there's not any, um, again, Maya-centric rigs that are going with this character. It's super clean, just a bone system with the rotation values and the geometry. And that's it.